ما شاء الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد all thanks and praise are due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and may his peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger الحمد لله last night we talked a little bit about the significance of ليلة القدر we talked about the night of power and we covered that the reason why this night is so significant the main reason why it's been made so precious and so valuable, so virtuous, such full of blessing, is because this is the night when the Qur'an was revealed. So the month of Ramadan, the entire month, is special because of this fact. شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ That the month of Ramadan is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed. هُدًا للناس as a guidance for all of mankind, for all of humanity. And oftentimes, this is a point that we overlook. We think that the Qur'an is just for us as Muslims. But in reality, the Qur'an is for every single human being. It contains some type of guidance for everyone, regardless of their race, their culture, their ethnicity, even their religion. So the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it contains guidance for Jews for Christians, for agnostics, even for atheists, for Hindus, for Buddhists, every single human being, there's some portion of guidance in the Qur'an for them, as long as they approach it with an open mind, with an open heart. But more specifically, the guidance that's found in the Qur'an is for us. It's for the believers, hudal lil muttaqin, for those people of God consciousness, because they are the ones who truly benefit from the guidance that's found in the Qur'an. وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَى and the Qur'an clearly explains what guidance is. That any individual who picks up the Qur'an, again with an open heart, with an open mind, and reads it looking, searching for the truth, searching for guidance, he will find it. Because the Qur'an cle- clearly explains what guidance is. furqan, And it clearly explains what's right and what's wrong. So this is the month of the Qur'an. One of these nights is the night on which the Qur'an was revealed. And alhamdulillah for the past almost three weeks now, we have been listening to the imams reciting the Qur'an from cover to cover on a nightly basis. And mashallah, some of them recite the Qur'an extremely beautifully with beautiful voices. And we've been standing behind them, listening to them, spending all of this time. And this is a huge act of worship. Our coming to the masjid at night and listening to the imams reciting the Qur'an, this is a huge act of worship. It's one of those things that's a means of forgiveness. And on top of that, it's an actual sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. This is an established practice that the Prophet ﷺ himself used to do. That every single night in Ramadan, the angel Jibreel would come to him and they would review the Qur'an with one another. So the Prophet ﷺ, he would recite Qur'an to Jibreel. And Jibreel ﷺ would recite the Qur'an to him. And they would review it every single night. Just like the students here do, right? When they recite the Qur'an to one another, a similar type of situation. So doing so, it's amazing. It has a lot of virtue, a lot of benefit. It's a means of forgiveness. But the question we should really be asking ourselves is how has this recitation affected us? How has our listening to the Qur'an changed our lives? What transformations has it brought? How has it affected our hearts? Because the purpose and objective of listening and reciting the Qur'an isn't just a simple recitation. It's not just simply listening to it. But the actual objective is to think, to ponder, to reflect over the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to derive lessons to get that guidance. And in order for that to happen, we have to have a strong, active relationship with the Qur'an. We have to listen to it actively, attentively, trying to figure out what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually telling us. The Qur'an, it's supposed to have an effect on our hearts. It's supposed to have an effect on our thoughts. It's supposed to have an effect on our perspectives, our viewpoints, the way we live our life. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He describes the believers by saying, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ That the believers, they are the ones that when the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, their hearts shake. So you know how you feel when there's an earthquake? When an earthquake comes unexpectedly, your hearts kind of shake. And you feel this extreme sense of fear and fright. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that a true believer, a person who has iman ingrained in his heart, when the name of Allah is simply mentioned, their hearts shake. They feel that sense of fear. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا And when the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are recited to them, their iman increases. So recite, reciting the Qur'an, listening to the Qur'an is supposed to affect our hearts. It's supposed to have a spiritual effect on us. It lifts our spirits, it raises our iman. It has this beautiful, profound effect. But again, the only way for us to achieve that is by building a relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the actual purpose is that. Right? The purpose of reading the Qur'an is to actually think over it, reflect over it, and act upon it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مُبَارَكٌ إِلَيْهُ وَكِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَبَّرُوا آيَاتِ وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَامِ so in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's speaking directly to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And He's saying, this is a blessed book that we have revealed to you, O Muhammad. This is a blessed book that we have revealed to you, O Muhammad. Why? لِيَدَبَّرُوا ayati, So that people can reflect over its verses. So that people can actually think about what's being said. وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ and when they do that, the people who have intellect, the people who use their minds, they will be reminded, they will be admonished. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off this verse by mentioning a one word description of the Qur'an. Mubarakun. That the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessed. It's full of blessings in every single way possible. So this one word, it's a very comprehensive description of the Qur'an. That the words of the Qur'an are blessed. The pages of the Qur'an are blessed. The meanings of the Qur'an are blessed. Its, its commands, its prohibitions, its stories, its teachings. Every single aspect of the Qur'an is a blessing. And part of that blessing is that every single letter we recite, it's multiplied by 10. We get 10 units of reward for every single letter that we recite. مَنْ قَرَأَ حَرْفًا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ فَلَهُ حَسَنًا وَالْحَسَنَةُ بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا Every letter a person recites from the book of Allah, they get one reward. And that one reward is multiplied by ten. Part of the blessings of the Qur'an is that those people who learn it, they learn how to read, they learn how to recite, they learn its meanings, and then teach it, they are the best of people. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهَا That the best amongst you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. So the Prophet wasallam, the best creation, the best of man, he's telling us that the best of my nation, the best Muslims, are those people who devote themselves to the study of the Qur'an. And after they learn it, they go on to teach it to others. Right? The best of people is not the person who's from such and such family and such and such lineage. The best of people isn't the one who has the most wealth, the biggest house, the nicest car. The best amongst us is not the one who has the highest degree in like multiple PhDs, whatever it is. The best person is one who learns the Qur'an and teaches it. Part of the blessings of the Qur'an is that a person who reads it, it will intercede on their behalf on the Day of Judgment. That when we're standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're being questioned, we're being asked about our deeds, we're being asked about our statements, the Qur'an will take a physical form. And it will come and it will plead on our behalf. That, oh Allah, this person used to recite your words, please forgive him. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this person would wake up at night and read your words, please overlook his faults. That, oh Allah, this person spent time studying your words, grant him paradise. So on the day of judgment, the Qur'an will come and intercede on our behalf. And that's just part of the blessings of the Qur'an. But again, the only or, or the actual objective is not these blessings. These are all extra. These are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us through His mercy. The objective of us reciting and reading is to think, ponder, reflect, and then act upon it. So we're supposed to have an active engagement with reciting the Qur'an. That when we're listening to the Imam reciting verses about paradise, and the Qur'an it's full of these exquisite descriptions of paradise. Ardu has samawatu wal ard. Paradise is such a place that its width 
is greater than the expanse of the heavens and the earth. فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رأت. Paradise, Jannah, it has things that no eye has ever seen before. There are such amazing, beautiful things in paradise that no human eye has ever seen before. وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ There are such sounds in paradise that no human being has ever heard before. وَمَا لَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرٍ There are those things that human beings haven't even imagined. It's beyond their comprehension. When we hear these descriptions of paradise, our heart should fill with hope. We should want that. We should desire that paradise. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing His forgiveness, His mercy, we should be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that forgiveness and mercy. That, Ya Allah, please forgive us. Ya Allah, give us your mercy. Ya Allah, give us this paradise that you're describing. At the same time, when we come across verses that describe the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they describe His punishment, they describe the torments of hell. And just as there are descriptions of paradise, there are descriptions of hellfire in the Qur'an as well. So when we come across those, our heart should fill with a sense of fear. Right? Our heart should actually shake and tremble. We should have a sense of fear and we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, please protect us from your punishment. That, Ya Allah, please protect us from the trials of the Day of Judgment. Ya Allah, please protect us from the punishment of the hellfire. So reading the Qur'an in active engagement creates the sense of hope and a sense of fear. And that's a balance that we as Muslims are supposed to maintain. This balance between fear, al-raja, or sorry, hope, al-raja, and al-khawf, fear, that's the balance of iman. That's the balance of faith. That we have hope and expectations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have hope in His mercy. We have hope in His forgiveness. We have hope in His reward. We have hope that He will accept all of our good deeds. But at the same time, we're supposed to have a sense of fear as well. That we fear the consequences of our actions, of our statements. We fear the day of judgment and standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We fear the punishment of the hellfire. And it's these two forces or these two feelings of hope and fear that drive our behavior. These are the two feelings that keep us in check. These are the two feelings that make sure that we're obeying the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and staying away from His prohibitions. And then when we come across a command in the Qur'an, we should be ready to obey it without any hesitation whatsoever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ We ask when and how many times a day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَتُوا الزَّكَاةِ Give zakah. We ask how much, when. Right? When we come across a prohibition, we're supposed to be ready to act upon it without any questions asked. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Riba is haram. أَحَلَّ اللَّهُ الْبَيْعَ وَحَرَّمَ الْرِبَا We leave it without any questions. Right? We don't deal with it, we stay away from it, no questions asked. So we're supposed to have again this active relationship, active recitation, active listening of the Qur'an. But now the problem that arises is that the vast majority of us do not understand the language of the Qur'an. Right? The vast majority of us, we don't know the Arabic language. So when we ourselves are reading it, we don't know what we're reading. When we're listening to the Imam reciting it, we don't really know what we're listening to. So how can the Qur'an have that effect on our hearts if we don't know what's being recited, if we don't know what's being said? So it's imperative. It's almost an obligation. As a matter of fact, it's an obligation upon us to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the Qur'an. So in order for us to build that type of relationship, we have to recreate the environment of Qur'an in our lives. We have to recreate an environment of Qur'an within our homes, within our families, amongst our children. That nowadays we have an environment of rush. Everything is rushed. We're constantly busy. That our days start at 8 a.m. in the morning and they end at 8 p.m. in the evening. And that entire block of time is taken. It's busy. We're at work. We're at school. We come home. We're tired and we rest. If you're kids, you come home. You spend so many hours on homework and playing outside, sports, whatever it may be. And oftentimes what gets overlooked is our relationship with the Qur'an, our relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have created environments of, in our homes of entertainment that we spend some time watching TV, we spend some time watching movies or watching dramas, whatever it may be, listening to the radio, online surfing the net. And we give time to these things every single day. But unfortunately, we don't give the same amount of time to the Qur'an. So in this month, right now, starting from tonight, 
all of us should make a firm resolution, a firm intention that starting from today we're building a relationship with the Qur'an. That every single day at home, there's a set time, a specific time where we come together as a family and we don't do anything else but study the Qur'an. We read a passage of the Qur'an, we read the translation along with it, we read some tafsir along with it, or listen to a tafsir lecture regarding it, and we discuss it as a family. And we do this on a daily basis, every single day at that particular time. And it never changes. No matter what's going on, that time is set and dedicated to a study of the Qur'an. And this is the way that we as an ummah can bring ourselves back. This is the way that the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ is going to change itself by coming back to the Qur'an. By coming back to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to do. By seeking guidance from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of us were aware of the situation of the Muslims throughout the world. Right? Our hearts bleed for them. Our eyes shed tears for them. We know that the Muslims are struggling and suffering oppression and injustice throughout the world. And again, we feel that sense of, of, of helplessness and hopelessness and we feel sad for them. That how can we help them? How can we help our brothers and sisters throughout the world? So obviously the main thing that we can do is we can make dua for them. A dua silahul mu'min. That dua is the weapon of a believer. And when we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah accepts our cause. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Your Lord says, call upon me and I will respond. I will answer to it. But in addition to making dua, it's imperative that we change our lives. That we bring our lives back into accordance to the teachings of the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet And that's what the Prophet ﷺ told us in a famous hadith. That, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْفَعُ بِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ أَقْوَامًا وَيَضَعُ بِهِ آخَرِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this book, He raises some nations. And He lowers others with it. So those nations, those individuals who read the Qur'an, who act upon it, who bring it into their lives and follow its guidance, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates them. He gives them their honor. He gives them dignity. He gives them respect. He gives them power. He gives them victory. He gives them success. Not only in this life, but in the life to come. But it's through the Qur'an. And at the same time, those nations who have the Qur'an, but they don't read it. They don't act upon it. They don't ponder over its meanings. They don't bring it into their lives. It's not an actual guidebook then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lowers those people. He disgraces them, He humiliates them, he, 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 he makes them taste defeat and struggle and hardships in the life of this world, and more importantly, in the life to come as well. So our teachers would always say that one of the main reasons that we find ourselves in the situation that we're in today is because the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has been detached from the Qur'an. And this is something that's a reality. This is something that all of us are aware of. That the relationship that we have with the Qur'an is not where it's supposed to be. And oftentimes, the only time we're reading the Qur'an is either in Ramadan. There's individuals that don't read the Qur'an for the whole year except in Ramadan. There's other individuals that may read it on and off. Maybe at a funeral, maybe at a wedding. But that daily dose, right, that daily connection, actually taking the Qur'an as a book of guidance is something that's lost. And this is something that we all have to work on. We all have to bring that back into our lives. We have to view the Qur'an as our own personal book of guidance. And if we do that, if we start with ourselves, with our families, with our communities, that's how change is going to come. Right? If you think about it in reality, how much can we affect the world? Right? One human being, one person, how much change and how much effect can they have on the world? Right? It's extremely difficult to change the situation and help people that are across the globe. But one of the main we ways that we can do it is through changing ourselves. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us in the Quran that Inna Allah la ma bi qawmin hatta ma bi anfusihim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change the situation of a people until those people change themselves, until they change their own situation. So along with all of these great activities that go on, all these you know, activist activities of boycotting products. Yes, we should boycott products of this whole BDS movement of boycott and divestment and sanctions. We should be a part of that. We should be part of protests. We should be part of all of these 
uh, political means of, of, of helping people out as well and through charity. But at the same time, we have to keep that balance, that we're also changing our lives. We're also making sure we're adhering more to the Qur'an and coming back to the Qur'an and building a stronger relationship with the Qur'an. So again, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because there's no better time to do that than now. In these last 10 nights, to re-establish that connection. Don't view the Qur'an as something as there's a barrier between you and understanding it. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِنْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the Qur'an easy. The only thing it requires is for us to give it the time. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah to make us from those people who come back to the Qur'an. To make us from amongst those who actually read the Qur'an on a daily basis. Who try to reflect, think, ponder over its meanings. And who try to bring the teachings of the Qur'an into our lives. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those people who are elevated through the Qur'an. And not from amongst those people who are debased and disgraced through the Qur'an. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the Qur'an a proof for us and not against us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help everyone who's struggling throughout the world to help in, in, and remove the injustice and oppression. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of our prayers, all of our worship, all of our fasting, all of our charity in this blessed month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to be found worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the night of power inshallah. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallah bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.